So thanks again for uh, clicking on this video. Uh, we hope it's uh, helpful and informative. Uh, if you would, remember to uh, like and subscribe uh, so you'll get uh, notified of future videos. Uh, this is part two of our DV2 tutorial. Um, we're going to have a disassembled pump and we're going to show you the basic things to look for. And then we'll have a subsequent video where we uh, do the reassembly. And hopefully this will be informative and maybe help you save a little bit of money. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I would encourage you to do that now uh, and then come back to this and it'll kind of uh, help you along. We're going to start off with, this is a pump that we disassembled previously, and I referenced in the video that in order to field um, service an injection pump, you were most likely going to have to um, purchase a housing kit, which is, this is what this is here. Uh, you can reach out to our customer service department, they can give you pricing and part numbers. And you're going to notice that um, this housing has been modified and it has a steel insert. And if you'll remember from the previous video, I referenced that it was a steel piston and aluminum housing, and that contributed to the wear. This steel insert uh, virtually eliminates that and makes for a much more durable pump. Uh, it's also going to have the throttle shaft bushings. Um, and so it's going to be, this is going to be your starting point for reassembling the pump. So you're going to want to uh, look into getting that. Obviously, anytime you service the, an injection pump, you'll have to have a gasket kit. Uh, we have those as well. Comes with all the gaskets you will need and probably has a few extra in here because it's a multi-fit kit. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned um, most people change uh, their blades. Uh, I don't know if, um, if you can see it from from there. Maybe our production guy can get an up-close shot. But you'll see that there's shiny wear uh, on this blade. And that shiny wear uh, is indicative of these needing to be replaced. And um, because this is what builds and maintains your housing pressure. Um, you have a kit that comes with four blades and the springs for them. Um, so you're probably going to want to replace those every time. And then the last thing is this uh, metering valve. Um, this is the valve, again, you'll see in the video where it was taken out. What you're going to look for there is uh, a new valve is very shiny, very bright. If you start to see some dulling uh, into the surface of the metering valve, or God forbid if you see rust or pitting, anything along those lines, that'll need to be replaced as well. Um, other than that, everything else here should be reusable. And I'm going to give you a couple of things to look for um, so you, you don't make a, a, a bad call. Um, first thing is the blades that I referenced, they ride in a um, transfer pump liner. And this is the liner here. And just like you're looking for wear in the blades, you want to look at the surface, the interior surface of the liner. And again, you, you want to look for a good liner uh, looks kind of pristine all the way through. It has very even wear throughout. If you start to see shiny spots and dull spots, liner is something you might want to take a look at replacing. Uh, liners have to be replaced probably one in every five, seven pumps that we have. Um, so that's not something that you um, would automatically replace, but you want to look for wear. Um, this is your governor washer. This is what your uh, weights ride around. Um, you're going to see um, a shiny uh, surface. Um, that's normal wear. Um, as long as you can't feel um, the wear, uh, it's perfectly normal for this to, uh, because of the weight spinning against it, it makes this shiny uh, interior um, ring. That's perfectly normal. Very rarely have to change those. Um, your rotor retainers, same way. Uh, you'll see some shiny spots, but as long as you can't feel it with your fingernail, it's fine to, um, um, to be reused. Simple roller test. Um, this is the roller and what's called the shoe. 
Now, you'll see that I've inserted the roller into the shoe and I can't pull it out this way. I have to slide it out. That means the shoe's good. If I were able to just grab this roller and pull it out, this shoe would be wore to the extent that it'd have to be replaced. Um, again, we don't normally have to replace those, but you'll want to check it. These are the pumping plungers that came out of the rotor assembly. Uh, again, you're looking for dullness, uh, kind of a graying of the surface. Um, general mechanic uh, uh, or pump uh, theory, you know, when it's shiny, it's closer to new. When you start to see dull and pits and those type of things, that's when you need to look to replace it. Um, Finally, the last couple of things I would mention to you, um, this is the cam ring. Um, we didn't go over this in the video um, for disassembly, but we will, we will in reassembly. This is the one part that can be put in backwards. And you would never know it until you got that pump on a truck and it would essentially be 180 out of time. This line right here, this orientation line, that is extremely important when you go to reassemble. Um, and we're gonna touch base on that. The line always goes to the top of this hole, uh, whether you're working on a 6.2, 7.3, 6.9. But I've had a lot of technicians, uh, novice technicians, who accidentally put this in backwards. <coughs> and again, you would never know it um, until you tried to run it on the on the vehicle. So that's important. Um, last thing I would mention, um, this is the drive shaft. Um, these seals here, uh, they're, they're coming in the kit. They always need to be replaced. Um, there are some tools uh, that are referenced in previous videos. Um, uh, a cone that you can use to put these on. Don't make the mistake, if you don't want to buy the tool, figure out a way to get the new seals on there, but don't make the mistake of reusing these seals because these seals, they swell as they're exposed to the elements and getting them back properly in a pump housing is virtually impossible. So that kind of gives you a follow-up to your disassembly. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you've already disassembled your pump, um, you're in the cleaning phase. Uh, I would recommend laying thing out in a, in a nice clean environment, uh, getting your O-ring picks, uh, installing everything in the gasket kit um, uh, that's pertinent, and uh, getting everything clean and ready for, uh, ready for assembly, which is gonna be our next video. So thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, like and subscribe. And if you have any technical questions anywhere along the process, just give us a call. Our number is listed below. And again, we appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead.